Hey everybody, Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone is doing well this evening. So, a little bit delayed with this video. Been uh, cooking up ideas here. You might even see the guitar behind me to the right. So, been working on some stuff for the channel actually. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But also, uh, the weather here has been quiet as well. So, kind of lost track of time here. So, forgive me for that. But video still up tonight. I hope but that being said make sure you guys smashing that like button trying to keep that a uh, streak of uh, consistency continuing here at least for the next little bit here especially as we anticipate things picking up but in the meantime though while it's pretty quiet for the most part in regards to severe weather the flooding is going to be a bit of a problem in the short term here towards LA we actually have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall here along with this atmospheric river that we've been watching uh, take effect over here towards the west coast. This is going to continue through today, but after that point, thankfully, the threat downtrends significantly. We now have a marginal risk, and then eventually by day three, we see that risk shift off mainly over towards the Ohio Valley, and it, for the most part, it looks like a marginal risk at the moment. Could there be a slight risk? Maybe, but... I don't think there is going to be quite as great a chance of uh, excessive rainfall with that. And then on days four and five, less than 5% chance of excessive rainfall there. So there's some good news to be had. We go back towards the severe weather side of things. We do have that marginal risk for day two, which would be Tuesday or Wednesday, excuse me. I got my days mixed up, but the main, the good news is with this threat, it's mainly going to be an elevated storm threat, which usually results in hail, which is what we're seeing here. I don't expect anything of great significance. We've been kind of talking about this storm system for a bit. This storm system originally, when I started seeing it, looked a lot more impressive on models, but has significantly downtrended over the last week. <coughs> Excuse me. But it looks more and more like we were going to struggle to get a really uh, sufficient trough to get going here. The short wave is kind of diminished too. We still could get storms to fire here, but the chance of a uh, tornado is pretty minimal. Damaging wind threat is pretty minimal too. So mainly just going to be looking at the potential for maybe some small hail. Could get above one inch in diameter there in a couple of regions here. But outside of that, it's going to be I would expect this to be rather uneventful at the moment. We'll still watch it, of course, though, just in case things kind of go the other way. Once we go beyond that point, we go back to day three. No severe expected there. And then when we go back beyond that point, for the short term, we look like we're pretty quiet until day eight here. And that's really going to be our talking point is the storm system that we're looking at towards the end of the month, because that's been one that I've been watching over the last few days. Storm system looks pretty impressive, has a very stout signal to it. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that now. So looking at the 500 millibar region in the atmosphere here, we can already see that our atmospheric river is just about done here. So we're almost done with the uh, excessive rainfall for the moment at least we're definitely going to see a downtrend in it on both the euro and the gfs here now one thing i want to make note of since i've made this video late is that euro run is a little bit ahead of the uh, the euro run is a little behind the gfs run actually so we're looking at the lunchtime euro model because we can only because this one goes up to 240 the uh afternoon evening uh euro run only goes 90 hours so kind of useless to us at when we're looking this far out gfs always goes to 16 days so that being said let's go ahead and run over here to the euro and take a look at what we have ahead here here's that next storm system that's going to prompt that marginal risk not really a whole lot there like i said there's almost not even a trough there it's a very small trough very weak trough and you can get just a little bit of forcing with this little uh, wind maximum right here but the amplitude isn't very impressive at all you could still get storms to fire and it looks like a very weak shortwave tries to get going somewhere around here and this will be enough to maybe get some storms to fire but it's just not going to be enough to really get a major severe event or of uh, any kind here we may not even see hail from it but there is a possibility then after that point we pretty much see that storm system roll out Start to see a little bit of a cool down out towards the east. 
So a couple of uh, cold shots sneak in here. And then after that point, this is where things start to get interesting. Start to see that ridging come in into play here. And right off in the distance here, you can see this little trough coming in. And honestly, when I see stuff like this, sometimes I almost can think of the Jaws theme in my head. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and watch this roll forward here. And you almost see what looks like maybe even a trough ejection try to occur here where we see this one trough roll roll out here or kind of shrivel away and then this one gets going on top of that and you almost can see what's semblance of a baseball bat swinging type of motion here the euro isn't quite as aggressive with it as the gfs which you'll see in the moment here but in either case here i do think that there's potential for both a severe event to be possible mainly thinking a little bit more towards the linear side of things and it could be pretty widespread and then also a wintry side on the back end of this as well so we could be looking at a pretty dynamic storm system here and this trend's kind of been holding out for the last several days here so i'm i'm not going to say that we are guaranteed to have it but it is something that definitely has garnered my attention and it's something that we're going to be talking about a lot over the next several days unless the trend kind of drops off here at this point. So this is that's what the euro is looking like. This is the GFS here. Pretty much a similar deal. Not even that much better orientation on that uh, trough there in regards to the setup for the middle of this week. Not really much to worry about there. So not too much to be concerned with at the, as in regards to this week in general but after that here we go again here's that ridging and the thing is with the gfs this is a lot more aggressive and then also the evolution of this uh, little southern low pressure area this trough here is a little bit more rapid with this and that's something that i'm i've made extra i've uh, made note of here this is going to be a key component to that because if this evolves quickly and kind of fizzles out it allows this trough to dig a little bit further and this could actually amplify our severe threat here could have maybe even a couple of rounds before all is said and done with this event here timing is still questionable at this time at the moment but i'm thinking tuesday night into wednesday could be our active point right around the 28th maybe the 29th as well <clears throat> and that before we shift over to a wintry event here that could be pretty significant because i mean if you actually look at this trough here and you look at this low it's really wrapped up nicely and that trough is dug pretty far so there's a lot of cold air and with the way that it was orientated in that last little bit there i do think we can get a decent little bit of a moisture pull out ahead of it to where we can have some remnant moisture left over to get some good snow here towards the Ohio Valley, maybe even towards the interior Northeast. Great Lakes, um, a little bit questionable as to the impacts with that region, but I do think maybe on the backside of this, we could see more lake effect snow. And then from that point onward, we see a little bit more of a fair weather pattern that unfortunately will not last in the long run here. I do think down the line, we'll start to see more and more severe weather as we start to shift closer towards spring which is pretty much to be expected during this time of year. So as we go to the precip types here, there's something I want you to make note of with that severe weather set up towards the 28th. You can actually see the mode with this just based off of that wind map, but you'll get to see it verified here on this precip map. So here's that first storm system. Like I said, not really much going on with that one, but as we continue to go on here, here is that next storm system rolling in. It's going to cause its problems out for the west. Then eventually, this could be a big snowmaker for the Rockies. No real surprise there. But we'll, here we go. Look at this right here. It's not an incredible look. But this looks like it could be a... Uh, if this can ramp up, this becomes a uh, potential linear event here. Depending on uh, how things play out with other parameters and factors running into it, we could actually get a linear mode, maybe a widespread uh, wind event, if this can uh, organize itself a little bit better. Yours kind of working a little bit against it. But in either case, if we go to the GFS, we'll actually see 
a very similar look. Like I said, the evolution of that little secondary trough is going to be a key component to a lot of this. So here we go again. Here's that next storm system. Low's a lot stronger with this one. And then of course this low is also deteriorating a little bit faster. Getting a good bit of moisture pull from that uh, subtropical region here. And then eventually, and then also note the, this northern low here ends up being a little further to the south. We get good forcing with this. You see that cold air lagging back a little bit. It's kind of leaning towards maybe a semi-negative tilt. This could potentially, like I said, still has that look of maybe trying to go linear. Like I said, other factors are kind of working against it. Instability is going to be a big question. Surface temperature and more. But like I said, to see these two models showing a similar signal definitely is an eyebrow raiser to say the least and an attention grabber if nothing else so like i said this is definitely something that we're going to have that's going to warrant a lot of attention and then like i said as we go further along here towards the back end of this that's when the wintry side really starts to kick in kind of take over a bit we could see some potentially significant snow into the interior northeast and then lake effect could be impressive on the back side of this as well so like I said, going to be a lot to watch with that system ahead here. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's going to be a little bit shorter than some of the other ones, but I just figured that I'd at least give you an update on the storm systems ahead in the meantime. We'll get a little bit more intricate with the details as we get closer to the event. That being said, hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. It's been Tyron Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care and have an awesome Tuesday night.